Hello and welcome to the course Set Up a New Company. In this lesson we will cover setting up a chart of accounts. In this lesson we will cover how to set up the general ledger by choosing from a set of pre-built options. We will also go over how to print the chart of accounts. After creating your new company database and entering the company's information, the next task is to set up the general ledger. The general ledger will need to be set up prior to making any starting balance entries. To set up the general ledger, select 1 General Ledger, 8 General Ledger Setup. Before you can select the account types, you need to enter the fiscal year end date and the current period. When setting up the general ledger, you have two choices. You can select a pre-built chart of accounts or manually enter your own. In this lesson, we're going to choose a pre-built chart of accounts. By choosing this option, you save a considerable amount of time at setup. However, you do still have a couple of choices to make. Let's go over those options now. Select Options. There are four choices. General Contractor Accounts, Subcontractor Accounts, Home Builder Accounts, and Remodeler Accounts. The first two options have yet another submenu. As you can see here, when you select the General Contractor Accounts, you can choose either a four-digit or five-digit chart of accounts. And the same goes for the Subcontractor Accounts. The Home Builder and Remodeler Accounts both have a four-digit chart of accounts. For our new company, let's choose the four-digit general contractor chart of accounts. You are then prompted with a message asking if you would like to install industry-specific cost codes, tasks, and estimating data. In addition, you can select the type of lumber your company typically uses. If you select No to install the items, you will have to set them up manually. For our example, we will select to install the cost codes, tasks, and estimating data. Select your estimating data type, industry-specific cost code scheme, and lumber type. Then click OK. Once the cost codes, tasks, and estimating data is installed, you will get a message letting you know the installation has been completed. Select OK. Now our pre-built chart of accounts is complete. Notice, in the account range boxes, the range has been created. It's 1,000 to 7,999. These ranges can be changed as long as the transaction has not been saved. On the account range tabs are the individual account ranges for asset accounts, liability accounts, equity accounts, income accounts, and expense accounts. Notice that the numbers are continuous. There aren't any gaps between an ending account range number and the next beginning account range number. This is important to remember if you're manually setting up your chart of accounts. Now that the chart of accounts is selected, we'll need to complete the general ledger setup. Let's talk about the account numbers on the different tabs. We've already discussed the accounts on the account range tab, so let's move on to the dedicated accounts tab. The balances on the accounts listed on this tab can only be affected by creating a transaction in their respective modules. For example, if you wanted to affect the balances of the Accounts Receivable account, you must go into the Accounts Receivable module and create an invoice or credit depending on how you want to affect the balance. If you try to make an adjustment to one of the dedicated posting accounts by entering a journal transaction in the 1-3 window, a message appears directing you to use a clearing account. The exceptions to this rule are the Equipment Assets, Equipment Depreciation, and Equipment Loans account. These are considered dedicated accounts since they cannot be changed once a transaction is entered. However, you are able to affect these balances from within the 1-3 journal transaction window. The accounts listed on the Posting Accounts tab are direct posting accounts. The program will automatically post to these accounts, yet they are different than the dedicated accounts in that the balances can be affected by a 1-3 journal transaction entry. For example, if you ask the program to calculate finance charges on a statement, the program automatically knows where to post those charges by the account designated here. 
Unlike the dedicated accounts, these direct posting accounts can be changed at any time. Just remember, if you change a direct posting account number, you must enter a journal transaction moving any balances from the old account to the new account. If your company has purchased the inventory module, you'll have access to the inventory section. A valuation method must be selected before saving the window. Even if you're not sure which method to choose, you still must select one. You can always go back and change the method prior to saving any transactions. But once the transaction is saved, you cannot change the valuation method. In this example, we'll select FIFO. Along with the valuation method, you must have an inventory offset account in order to use the inventory feature. The account accumulates any differences recorded in the system when the item's invoice price is compared to the item's value based on your accounting valuation method when processing an account's payable credit or purchase order receipt. The account also accumulates dollar amounts that represent differences between the original cost of an item and the item's cost at the time an inventory audit is performed through the 12-4 inventory audit menu or when removing inventory items from period zero. Because the account activity rolls up with the other overhead account balances at year end, the offset account must fall in the overhead account range. In this example, we'll use the account 6980 for our offset account. The checkbox verify date period gives you the option to receive a message when the date of a transaction does not fall within the current posting period. However, this does not prevent you from saving the record. It is just a reminder. You can click through the message and continue with your work. The general ledger setup is now complete. At this point, and until a transaction is saved, the account ranges and dedicated accounts can be changed. But remember, once a transaction is saved, these accounts cannot be altered. Now that your general ledger is set up, it's a good time to print the chart of accounts. By printing the chart of accounts, you can view the individual accounts and make any necessary adjustments to them prior to entering transactions. To print the chart of accounts, open Menu 2, Accounting Reports, then 7, Chart of Accounts. Select to preview the report. In this report, all of the ledger accounts are listed. Now you can review this list and determine whether or not any accounts need to be added, deleted, or have their names changed. Remember, as long as you have not saved any transactions, you can modify the account ranges. But as soon as a transaction is saved, no modifications can be made to the account ranges or dedicated accounts. Now it's your turn to give it a try. Open Best Builders Ever and create a chart of accounts. Then go to 2-7 and print the chart of accounts report. When you are finished, return to this lesson and press continue. We've just covered how to set up and print the chart of accounts. Next we'll cover adding accounts, departments, and sub-accounts. Sage offers several ways for you to interact and get the answers you need quickly. Get help from others with similar questions in a Sage City community. Find answers in our knowledge base or take an online course on Sage University.